This is our land. A land of peace and of plenty. A land of harmony and hope. This is our land. up it's your girl kelly we're back with another video if y'all are new to the channel please go ahead and hit that subscribe button let me know you're here i would really appreciate it guys if you're into true crime news politics so much more uh i would greatly appreciate it if you would subscribe and if you're a returning listener or subscriber thank you as always for being a friend i appreciate y'all so much like the video if you like it let me know what you think about the topic in the comments and uh hit the bell whatever you can do guys it really helps me out and i appreciate each and every one of y'all and if you guys are uh, a regular listener or watcher of the channel then you're probably wondering what's up with the intro um i have used that 1984 intro before usually whenever uh some censorship third world shit happens and that is such the case today. Um, so I did a video about the Israeli-Palestine conflict, the war, all-out war that has broken out in the Middle East. And I mean, for whatever reason, YouTube decided that they didn't want to allow my video on the platform, um, called it misinformation, said that I was uh, displaying old footage, trying to pass it off as new, when I was literally just playing the exact same things that everyone has been showing on Twitter, everyone's been showing on YouTube. I really have no explanation for why, but they did remove my video like immediately. And the only reason I can think is because uh, I'm a smaller content creator and I think that they think that they can do it. They can get away with it and silence all of the uh, opinions who don't go along with the status quo. So I just wanted to come on here. I'm going to try to make another video. This one will be much more filtered and, um, you know, I'm just going to, <laughs> I don't even know. I mean, I'm going to try to do what I can. I spent three hours editing that video. I'm a little pissed off about it to be quite honest, but you can go ahead and find it on Rumble if you guys want to. So it is on my Rumble channel. If you guys want to go and watch the video that I posted to my YouTube yesterday, but this will be more of a, a uh, shorter version and more toned down. Um, I didn't even say anything crazy in this video. Like I really thought that I was pretty tame, but I want to know what you guys think about all this. It really is so sad and, um, just very blackpilling to see what's transpired there. And not only that, but the reaction from people on both sides of this conflict from this country who I don't even really understand why, there is such a, a visceral reaction to something like this, a conflict that is happening halfway across the globe, but yet here we are. And I guess I should have known based on what's going on in Ukraine, but this is a whole new animal and people, they really go crazy over uh, this Israel-Palestine shit. So we're going to get into it, guys. And uh, as I stated in this video here previously, I'm pretty ignorant when it comes to what has been going on, the history of the uh, uh, Israel and Palestine conflict. And, you know, obviously I knew that this was um, a long standing dispute over not only land, but what most consider to be holy land and uh, ideological, religious disagreements. I mean, just the whole nine yards. People that basically hate each other living in the same uh, landmass that is about the size of like. Maryland, I believe. It's like a, a smaller U.S. state. Everybody jam-packed into this small landmass and they all hate each other and they've all been at war with each other for decades. So this all kind of started back whenever the British got involved and decided that they wanted to create a state that would be specifically for the Jews and offered a solution to divide Palestine up into two separate equal states where both parties could coexist but obviously this conflict has been going on for centuries uh, even this timeline i don't believe is um goes back as far as the original 
disputes actually began. And I'm not going to get too far into the weeds with this because I'm I'm ignorant to the facts when it comes to this for the most part, you know. I know a little bit of the background, but I don't want to like botch anything or I don't want to uh, misspeak or say, you know, something that, that is incorrect in regards to this timeline because it's a sensitive topic. And again, I don't know what got me removed from YouTube the first time. So this just kind of breaks it down. I will post this link in the description box of basically what has been going on, different time, different uh, periods, different significant moments in the ongoing battle for this land and for the rights to this land. So it really came to head in like the early 19th century, or I guess it'd be the 20th century, um, where again, the UN kind of got involved and decided that the Jews needed their own state in what was once their land many, many centuries ago. And then during the 1500s, the Ottoman Empire developed that land into what was known as Palestine for uh, a quite a long time up until about the First World War. So again, and then these people were displaced and dispersed. And then after World War II happened, you know, big bad, you know, mustache man. Um, this is when they kind of came back to Israel and when the entire world decided that it was everyone's job to kind of like pitch in and, and protect, uh, you know, the, the precious people of Israel and the, um, uh, you know, you, you know, the people, you know, the ones, the bankers. So, um, so that's that again, like I said, I'm not going to get too far in the weeds because I, I, I just, I was, uh, playing a history video, like from history.com and, I thought they explained it pretty well, but maybe that was what they were trying to say. I was posting old footage. I don't, I don't know. I'm kind of salty about it. So if you guys want to look into this timeline, it'll be there for y'all. But I'm going to go straight to the horse's mouth, guys, uh, and allow a Jew to speak, okay? Uh, because somebody, I posted about it in my community tab, and somebody commented about how Ben Shapiro is allowed to post on his YouTube channel, all of the graphic videos on the World Wide Web and talk about the genociding of Palestinians and eradicating them from the earth, basically. He's allowed to do that. And that's called moral. That's called okay. That's called acceptable. But someone like me, who I'm pretty neutral when it comes to this conflict. I think it's it's awful. It's egregious what is happening in that region. I mean, nobody wants to see any kind of war and the kind of things that we're seeing on our timelines is vicious and it's evil and it's absolutely deplorable. But at the same time, I, as an American citizen who is an America first patriot when it comes down to my politics, uh, and I don't believe that the United States needs to involve itself in every last international conflict because the people who grandstand and act like America, it is our job to go and be the leaders of the free world and, you know, stick our nose in every last conflict. Well, I, you really, it's funny to me because you really just don't see those people um, getting involved in like the wars that break out in Africa. We don't get really too far involved in those. Those, those kinds of wars, those kinds of conflicts get no airtime on our media, but somehow... Anytime anything breaks out in certain parts of the globe, it's not only broadcasted all over our mainstream media, but you see the parade of usual suspects getting themselves up on a microphone to grandstand and tell all of us that we need to back a, a foreign war and send our money, our taxpayer dollars, and potentially our sons to war to fight these foreign battles that have nothing to do with us in the end. I don't think that like war. Okay. So like, I'll put it this way. War is a part of human nature. And obviously it, it's inevitable when it comes to this imperfect world we're living in. And so I don't just completely say that, you know, I'm not just like this anti-war, like hippie where I think that no war should ever be fought anywhere, any time, any place, because I understand how the world works. But I think that America should only involve itself in wars whenever it interests us directly. Whenever we're either directly attacked or one of our, like, serious allies is attacked. And I don't look at Israel as a serious ally. I'm sorry. They, you know, they've been working against us. And people want to say that, like, they're our greatest ally. And 
it's kind of like Saudi Arabia, you know, they're an ally. They are a strategic ally. I don't think they're our, our greatest ally. I would classify Israel as a strategic ally. Not just me. Again, I'm no expert on for, foreign policy. This is just the way I see it. It's my little opinion. So Ben Shapiro is allowed to come on here and talk about, you know, I am a Jew. May God avenge their blood. Okay. The face of absolute evil talking about uh, Palestinians and Hamas. So let's hear from him, guys. Um, because God forbid I speak and uh, express my opinion as a person with, you know, less than 2,000 subscribers on my channel here. But Ben Shapiro with 6.38 million subscribers can get up on his channel and show footage that is graphic in nature, like these people holding guns, these people who are dying in the streets, and it's not a problem for YouTube. But me, let me speak about something that's just a, an opinion, and I get my video removed. Again, I'm an American, okay? It's I, I look at it the same as with the Ukraine situation, okay? I, I don't think that America needs to go and stick its nose and its, its neck out for all of these different conflicts that only put us in more jeopardy, put us in more debt, put us in, in more risk, okay? We are creating more and more enemies as we continue to do this, and I think that we should take a moral stance when it comes to how we feel on these conflicts, but to actually go and be right in the middle of it, put ourselves right in the thick of it, to me is inappropriate, and I think that it needs to stop. It, it really does. I just don't want to see America be put in a more vulnerable vulnerable position than we already are. Because we absolutely are. I, I don't know. Is that so crazy to have that take? Because I, I really just don't believe that it is. And especially seeing what I have seen all throughout Twitter, all throughout YouTube, the reactions from people who are just bloodthirsty, who are just calling for uh, what equates to genocide. And I think that what Hamas, the terror group did, was horrific. I mean, there should be consequences for that. People are calling for the eradication of, like, all Palestinians. And I, I that is where I find deep, troubling undertones with, with these uh, responses from these people. And that is what troubles me the most. Rhetoric about uh, taking them out, leveling Gaza. That's where I recoil in, in disgust with the whole entire situation. Because, no, Israel did not deserve this. No one ever deserves brutality against them on these levels. And I would show you guys some of the videos from this horrific attack, you know. But I don't think I can. And there's other things that are suspicious with this whole thing. Like the intelligence arms of the United States and the Mossad, the intelligence arm of the Israeli government. Those two branches are some of the most entrenched groups that are constantly surveilling communications and um, and have in the past been able to detect these sorts of attacks and counteract them with great ease. So why was this any different? Why was the Iron Dome unable to function properly when it usually has no problems whatsoever. It's one of the most sophisticated pieces of military equipment used for self-defense on the globe. I mean, what, what, there's so much sketchy shit and it's like, they're calling this now the Israel's 9-11, which, wow, y'all are really, really saying the quiet part out loud, aren't y'all? Israel's 9-11. Okay, that's not suspicious at all. That doesn't s signal to me that there's more to the story than y'all are telling at all. So, Ben Shapiro's a Jew, he wants you to know, and he stands with Israel. He's a Zionist. I don't understand why he lives here. Uh, probably because it's safer in America, but I mean, go, li go live there if that's where you want to be. I mean, I just don't understand it. Like, I, I mean, when are we going to start putting our country first? If you're an American and you love America, how about let's look after us, okay? I don't know when we just started this process of as soon as any conflict happens that American politicians like and... Uh, I mean, that's just any conflict whatsoever. I mean, they, there's not a war on this planet that your average American politician doesn't rub his hands together and lick his lips, salivating over the idea of sending money, troops, or whatever into those places, okay? So, it's just outrageous to me. Um, I do want to show you guys, since we talked about Gaza, this is uh, the history of Gaza in two minutes from CNN. I'm just going to show you guys this. I mean, and I have no, it's not like I'm like pro-Palestine at all. I'm not pro-Israel. I, again, I'm neutral. I am 100% neutral. I don't follow this. I don't really, I mean, I care because obviously I care about other human beings and I care about 
human life. And I think that we're all of God. But this is this really is tragic. What has been going on with these people? Two million people in like such a small strip of land live here where they're completely walled in. Their borders are patrolled by Israeli military forces for the most part. And then Egypt on a small faction. So any supplies getting in or out is completely monitored, totally uh, controlled and everything like that. Which also begs another question, how these terrorists, these Hamas terrorists, ended up with all of these weapons that they got, ended up with all of these supplies that they were able to obtain to conduct this surprise attack on Israel. It begs a lot of questions, and those questions need answers. About 25 miles long and 7 miles wide, but this small strip of land is one of the most fought over in history. It was an Egyptian base, a royal city for the Philistines, and the place where the Hebrew hero Samson, betrayed by Delilah, met his death. Since then, much blood has been spilled. The most recent contest for Gaza began at the end of World War II, when persecuted Jews travelled to Israel from Europe, looking for a new start after the horrors of the Holocaust. In 1947, the United Nations created a plan to split Palestine into two lands, one for Jews and one for the Arab people. Backed by the US President Harry S. Truman, David Ben-Gurion, Israel's founder, proclaimed the establishment of the State of Israel in 1948. Egypt then attacked Israel through the Gaza Strip. Israel was victorious, but Gaza remained under the control of Egypt and an influx of Palestinian refugees began. In 1967, war broke out between Israel, Egypt, Jordan and Syria. In what became known as the Six-Day War, Israel seized the Gaza Strip and held it for 40 years. Israel pulled its forces out of Gaza in 2005. In 2006, Hamas, a group sworn to destroy Israel and listed by the United States, the European Union and others as a terrorist group, won a landslide victory in Palestinian legislative elections. Hamas was now in control of the territory. However, Israel still controls much of the area's access to and from the Gaza Strip. Since then, Israel and Hamas have been exchanging blows. Israel maintains that Hamas is a violent terror organization, while Hamas says that they represent an oppressed people being okay. victimized by the Jewish state. The international community the continues to press for a cease in violence, but for now, the Strip's population of 1.8 million people are trapped in the crossfire. So, yeah, I mean, I mean, just look at how small this is. If you zoom out of this, 25 miles by 7 miles. I think that's smaller than Manhattan. I mean, it's it's tiny, but it's just like, I'm tired. I'm tired of seeing our country going to shit and having all of these people come up here and preach to us about how we need to go and get involved in this when we can't even have a goddamn southern border wall okay to stop the flow of all of these criminals coming into our country and doing us harm i'm sorry i'm tired of it i'm tired of defending foreign countries borders without even a shred of intention on defending ours and i think somebody i think it was on megan kelly's podcast made the point that like if we had never gotten so far into the ukraine conflict as we did would people be more supportive of uh, involving ourselves in this conflict with um, Israel and Palestinians. And I think that's a valid point. I think that maybe, uh, maybe I might be more receptive to it. I mean, the Ukraine war, proxy war, has been going on for far too long. We've sent entirely too much money over there. It's being laundered. It's corrupt. It's absolutely a, a, a psyop. I think this is a real actual conflict. I think the Ukraine situation is more of like this just shit show um, theater I mean, there's obviously real war happening there, too, but I don't think it's as, it's as uh, deep as it is in Palestine and Israel with their whole deal. So I, I am I do agree with that point that I think a lot of Americans would be more receptive to helping with this conflict. But again, to me, Israel is more of a strategic ally as opposed to an actual ally. And that's just my opinion. But what do you guys think? Because I want to know if you guys have more knowledge than I do, which I'm sure Plenty of you out there do. I would love to hear it. So 
Let's listen to the Trump warning just about two months ago when Biden decided to send $6 billion to Iran. If you guys, again, aren't familiar with this, Iran supports Hamas. They hate Israel also. They hate America very deeply. And so why President Poopy Pants would send $6 billion to Iran in exchange for hostages, five hostages, it's beyond me. And a lot of people are saying that this funded the operation with Hamas into Israel. I don't know anything about that. I mean, it rings true, but again, I, I, I just don't know. There's no way of me to get on here and say that for a fact. But I, I think either way, we should have never done that. And President Trump is right. You don't pay money for hostages, okay? You try to make some sort of diplomatic agreement in exchange for American citizens return to the country. You don't pay people's lives with money because guess what that incentivizes? More kidnapping of more American lives. I mean, it's just common sense. Crooked Joe Biden just agreed to pay a $6 billion ransom to the Iranian dictatorship in exchange for hostages. This is yet another Biden surrender and a further blistering humiliation of the United States of America to the world stage. Mm -hmm. But even worse, this decision will be extremely deadly. Biden is giving $6 billion to the world's leading state sponsor of terrorism. Just as when Obama sent the Iranian regime pallets of cash for hostages in the dark of night, remember, plane loads of cash, Biden's ransom payment will be immediately used to stoke violence, bloodshed, and mayhem throughout the Middle East and all around the world, costing countless innocent lives. It's also guaranteed that the fanatical Iranian regime will use this money to advance their nuclear weapons program, putting Israel, the United States, and the entire world in very grave peril. They are reportedly just weeks away from a nuclear bomb, something which would have never happened under the Trump administration. Tragically, Biden's ransom payments also make it dramatically more likely that even more Americans will be held captive in the future because Biden has shown that he will pay gargantuan sums of money, meaning the kidnappers turn a massive profit. They're making money hand over fist. In other words, Biden has put a bounty on the head of every American citizen abroad. Under my leadership, we brought home more than 50 hostages from all over the world, and we never paid ransom money mm -hmm. to do it. Not at all. We did it with diplomacy this and fucking we war did it right here. strength. And we will do it again when we are reelected as President of the United States. Our country is failing. We are a failing nation. We will turn it around and we will make America great again. Thank you. God bless this man. Um, Crooked Joe Biden. We love to see it. We love to see Donald Trump. Uh, we need to see him reelected. Obviously, he's not Captain America. He's not the savior of America. But, uh, I mean, uh, night and day when it comes to the way that our country was run under his presidency and under Joe Biden's. It's just not even a question. So, he predicted this. He was right once again. Joe Biden's absolute incompetence, his idi his idiocracy, his just utter failure as a human being, as a man. Okay, he's just a total throwaway as a person, okay? Throw the whole man away because he's he's just a, he's a dumb fuck and he is to blame for this one way or another what you think the intentions were what you think might be the root cause whether you think this is uh all planned people are trying to stoke world war three i don't know i can't say it's so nuanced and it's really so much bigger than myself and it's bigger than anything that i even want to have to fathom because I only want to think about our country and what's good for Americans, what's good for me, what's good for my family, what's good for my community. So, I don't know. He was right. And let's look at President Dementia's statements where he gave very brief comments that seemed totally disingenuous. And he drug his ass up on national TV with his failure, Secretary of State Anthony Blinken, to deliver this statement here. <laughs> Today, Jesus. people are under attack, Jesus, Jesus. orchestrated by a terrorist Fuck. organization, Hamas. God. In this moment of tragedy, I want to say to them and to the world, and to terrorists everywhere, <laughs> the United States stands with Israel. Oh, really? 
we will not ever fail to have her back. Mm. We'll make sure that they have the help their citizens need and they can continue to defend themselves. Mm. You know, the world's seen appalling images. Thousands of rockets in a space of hours raining down on Israeli cities. I got up this morning and started this at 7 38 o'clock. My calls. What? Mass terrorists crossing in Israel, killing not only Israel. Why the fuck are you getting up at 8 a.m., okay? When there's a war that just broke out in the Middle East, okay? Sleeping in a little bit, Joe? Sleepy Joe? You decided you were going to you know, have a little extra rest? Shouldn't you be up at the butt crack of dawn on that fucking phone getting shit done as the President of the United States? I'm sorry. You slept till 8? I mean, I, I really loathe him. He doesn't give a fuck. He doesn't care. And you don't care. Mm-hmm. You know, when I spoke about Turn your phone off. This morning, I told him the United States stands with the people of Israel. Oh, did you? Mm. Israel has the right to defend itself and its people. Full stop. Mm -hmm. There's never justification for terrorist attacks. And my administration's support for Israel's security is rock solid and unwavering. Mm -hmm. Let me say this as clearly as I can. Oh, that's There's hard for you. Any party hostile to Israel to exploit these attacks to seek advantage. Yeah. The world is watching. I've also been in contact with the King of Jordan, spoken mm -hmm. with members of Congress, directed my national security team to engage with their Israeli counterparts, military to military, intelligence to intelligence, mm -hmm. dipl diplomat to diplomat, to make sure Israel has what it needs. I've also directed my team to remain in constant contact with leaders throughout the region including Egypt, Turkey, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, Jordan, Oman, the UAE, as well as our European partners and the Palestinian Authority. It's also a terrible tragedy on a human level. It's hurting innocent people. Seeing the lives that have been broken by this, the families torn apart, it's heartbreaking. And Jill and I are praying oh, Wow, I really believe you. have been impacted by this violence. We grieve with those who have lost their loved ones, <laughs> lost their peace of their soul. God. We have hope for swift recovery for many who have been wounded. But we're going to remain in close touch with Prime Minister. I personally am going to remain in close contact with Prime Minister Netanyahu oh, really? as this situation continues to develop. Mm -hmm. Let there be no mistake. The United States stands with the state of Israel. Just as we have from the moment the United States became the first nation to recognize Israel 11 minutes after its founding <laughs> 75 years ago. Thank you very much. Mm. Mr. President, was there uh, an I mean, hello? Lead up to this attack? There absolutely was. Can you tell us what he asked you specifically for support? I mean, what a, what a joke. What a joke of a government we have. Doesn't take a single fucking question, okay? Anthony Blinken standing up there beside him, looking like a damn bump on a log after he had to delete his Twitter posts, okay? They were calling for a ceasefire, and people got on his ass about it. I'm sure the Israel lobby was, uh, you know, hot on his tail about that shit, you know, saying that absolutely not will there be a ceasefire. We're going to kill every person that we can because, you know, there was a conflict or whatever, and now we want ultimate genocide against people. But, you know, whatever. I, I don't know. Again, Israel has the right to defend itself. Any nation has the right to defend itself. And I fully support that nation for doing so. I think what happened to Israel is disgusting. I think it's evil. I think that the people who did that, I mean, they, they will end up paying one day when they meet their maker. And I, I feel pity on them because what they did was horrific. But it doesn't mean that we need to stick our neck in the middle of it and slit our own throats to... You know, cover Israel. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We also have the right to defend our nation, America. Okay. And Joe Biden is a he's a joke and a disgrace. I mean, not a single question. Absolutely, there was intelligence failures, and whether or not you want to call them failures or deliberate, you know, oversights, that's on you. Okay. Y'all, let me know what y'all think in the comments. So again, I'm gonna play this video in the background. This music festival was, um was targeted it was horrific i covered this in my first video and i'm really pissed off that youtube removed my video but 
Um, I'll just show you this in the background. I think that, like, the way that they came in when, if you know anything about the history of these two regions, okay, which is really just one small region, very small region that's a conflict with one another, there's no way that Hamas could have ever pulled this off without the intelligence agencies knowing something, okay? There's just no way. People were kidnapped. There were women who were being slaughtered, children kidnapped, men killed. Like, I mean, just innocent people lost their lives. These people were at a festival, a music festival, and were descended upon from the sky, the sea, and the ground. It's, I mean, it's just unthinkable. I can't, I cannot imagine it. I just cannot, and I feel so horribly for the people who had to experience this firsthand. And I think that it's egregious, but I, I'm not going to turn around and call for other innocent people who are also victimized, I would say, by these people, these terrorists who live within their ranks as Palestinians in the Gaza Strip which is, again, a 25 miles by 7 mile strip of land where 2 million people uh, live. You know, I'm not going to turn around and say then then their existence as a people needs to be eradicated and they don't deserve to live anymore and they should all just be killed because tit for tat, you know, eye for an eye. Uh, absolutely not. And if you hold that position, I would suggest you look in a mirror and really figure out what it is that you're trying to say. I mean, this is pretty gross too. BLM Chicago showing the paratroopers, the people who were uh, flying into Israel to murder innocent citizens, support reposting this. This is another thing I have absolutely no patience for. I have absolutely no understanding of why American citizens are on board with this thirst for blood, with this thirst for for war against Israel or Palestine, either way, either way you stand. It's so beyond me. I mean, most people couldn't even point out these areas on a map, okay? And they, I mean, it's 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 like a mass psychosis. It really is. A, it is a brainwashing to like mass degrees, like the, the protesting in the streets all over the country. You would think that like, some of the scenes that we saw on Twitter of people with Palestinian flags, people with Israeli flags fighting in the streets of America, you would have thought that these came straight out of the Middle East. And it's just American citizens or people who are living in America who aren't citizens going out into the streets activated over this conflict when they can't even get activated over the loss of their own fucking country, America, okay? They don't give a fuck what's happening to us. They, they, they could care less. They would spit on an American flag, but are out there waving these foreign flags for these foreign causes. It enrages me to no degree. And I mean, I just, I'm about to wrap up this video because I'm really going to go off the, off the rails, okay? Pro-Palestinian crowd cheers after speaker praises Hamas invasion into Israel. Okay. Dan Crenshaw is another war pig who would love to see more violence, would love to see more war. And so, of course, he's on his Twitter promoting all of that and more. So I think everyone's disgusting who, who would advocate for this, who would take a stance on either side when you won't even stand up for this country, when you won't even advocate for the betterment of this nation. I find you to be repulsive. So I hope I'm getting my point across on a, on a, um, on a cohesive level because I really think that, you know, it, it's just... It's nuanced to such a large scale, but like this is in Florida right here. Fighting, okay, broke out in the streets over this shit when we can't even get people in the streets for their own communities and their own countries. Where, I mean, hello. I think, can we make it illegal to fly a foreign flag in this country? That's step one. Step two, any illegal immigrants needs to be deported immediately, if not sooner. And third, if you care more about a foreign conflict than you do about the ruination of America, then you as a citizen can also be deported and sent to whatever country you care about so much 
that you fight harder for them in the sh- in the streets of your own country, you can go too. Let's put them on a boat. Let's ship them over there so they can help fight and, def- and defend those countries that they care about so much. More scenes from this uh, festival. People running from these terrorists. Um, I wanted to show y'all Laura Loomer's tweet. And then, because uh, this was also disgusting. I'm not going to read this whole thing, but this is just an example of, of some of the more disturbing tweets that I saw from people on all sides of the political spectrum that just absolutely took my breath away because of the callous nature of them. There is no such thing as Palestine. It's always been a figment of the imagination of Islamic terrorists and Jew haters. Israel belongs to the Jews. For the sake of humanity and what is righteous and good in the war on evil, Israel must level Gaza, flatten it into a parking lot, and then glass it. The one-state solution doesn't include a world or a scenario where Israelis can coexist with Hamas animals and their sympathizers. They must be shown through IDF force that they don't exist and their pretend homeland doesn't exist. We will not recognize these animals, and the entire world must unite in rejecting them and denying them any sense of dignity. Wow. IDF can give 24 hours to women and children so they can evacuate, but then Gaza must be destroyed. Wow. So kind. So kind of you to give 24 hours to women and children to evacuate to uh, places where Laura Loomer knows damn well herself that they can't evacuate to. Where are they going to go? Israel? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Or... Egypt, who also don't want them there. I mean, it's just a ridiculous notion. Bibi Netanyahu said the same thing, that he was going to allow people to evacuate from Gaza. There's no place for them to go. I mean, they're kind of trapped in. And I'm not sympathizing with Palestine. I, I really don't have a dog in the fight. But I just I hate the, like, bloodthirst. I, I mean, from both sides. Hamas actually went and perpetuated actual violence and bloodshed onto Israel which I find to be absolutely disgusting and totally outrageous and wrong. But the solution and the response to that shouldn't be to get on here and and spew all this hatred out of your own mouth and via your own Twitter page or whatever. Let the Israeli government, let the Israeli military take care of that situation how they deem to be fit. We don't need all of these other people getting on here, getting themselves all riled up and getting other people riled up and stirred into a frenzy over war, okay? It's it's just a little ridiculous to me. So, and this is where she lost me. Palestinian terror must be driven from this planet. There is a reason why no other Islamic country in the Middle East wants the Palestinians in their country. So, you claim it's about Hamas, but then you're grouping in Palestinians who I would say that some amongst those ranks are innocent civilians innocent women innocent children so when is it okay for israel and jews to call for the killing of women and children and you know actually doing that actually going through with those threats of violence which is totally justifiable in my opinion because they were attacked first or you know they were attacked in a, in a very egregious way but To get on here on Twitter and say all of this, it's just a little wild to me. I'm sorry. I don't agree. I don't agree. So I will just end that and say this, that all people who seek to kill, murder, perpetuate evil and terrorism onto other people are totally inhumane, evil human beings. And the hard truth is that we here on planet Earth have to live with people like that every single day. We have to witness these sorts of things every day. I mean, two things I feel can be true. And again, I don't like taking middle ground. I normally don't. But in this case, I I can safely say that, yeah, violence on one side doesn't justify violence on another. And Israel has the right to protect itself, as they should. But we don't need all of these extra people coming up here and stoking the flames of violence, stoking the flames of war, beating the drums of war, just to rile people up and cause more conflict within the populace of the world and within all these countries, which now we are seeing spill out into the streets of America and other places like Australia, other Western countries all over the globe are now flying the flags of Palestine and Israel when they don't even care about what happens to their own countries. It's really, really sad and disgusting. So that's just my thoughts, guys. Let me know what yours are, please. Hopefully this video won't get taken down. I 
I really hate you, YouTube. Honestly, I really do. I, I you know, I, I'm trying not to be salty about it, but here I am, a little salted. So, y'all subscribe, please. Do that if you would. I would greatly appreciate it. And um, like the video if you liked it. Please leave a comment and let me know what you think about this topic, about this, I mean, absolutely horrific turn of events. This is going to have consequences for us here in America, no matter what, just because of our foreign policy and because of how grave the situation is. And I got news flash for you. China is, is next. There's going to be a conflict with China very soon. Okay. Mark my words. But what do y'all think? Let me know, guys. And until next time, y'all please stay safe out there. And I will see y'all next time. All right. Bye. I just tell the truth. And telling the truth is crazy in a world full of lies. If you mix brilliance with bravery, that we can ignite something. Even this conversation alone can ignite the people the time is now to express and for people to believe in themselves. The time is now for it to be okay to be great. People in this world shun people for being great, for being a bright color, for standing out. But the time is now to be okay to be the greatest you.